I edit a lot of documents for my job as a lead practitioner in science in secondary schools. Part of my responsibility is quality assuring some science curriculum documents for a large group of schools. And this means a great deal of editing, sometimes tiny details in documents which were actually made years ago and they've been converted to PDF for portability. I've used Adobe Acrobat for some time and I get that as part of the creative suite that I subscribe to to get the software that I use to make these videos for you all but it isn't cheap on its own. So I'm not sure that I would really recommend a subscription to Adobe Acrobat for you as an individual. Businesses, maybe. Recently, I've been trying out PDF Element from Wondershare, and they've kindly sponsored me to bring you a feature comparison of Acrobat and PDF Element today. There's lots more content that I've made showing off PDF Element and all that it can do, so I'll put them on the screen at the end of this video. Wondershare have asked specifically that I bring out the benefits of both softwares, and not to simply focus on the positives of one of them. So you'll find this to be an honest and balanced resource for making the choice between these two excellent PDF management tools. So why should you use a PDF editor? For me, early on in my academic career, PDFs allowed me to create something which was changeable and fluid on my end, but fixed in delivery to my audience. Something that I could make in exactly the format that I wanted, whether that was for a full screen reader, a landscape screen, or a vertical format, or indeed for print. I wanted all the control in apps like Word, Publisher, Photoshop, or InDesign, but I wanted my audience to have exactly the experience that I intended every single time. For example, we had to submit our final architecture portfolio as a fully hyperlinked PDF. And when I applied to my teaching training, I amazed the assessors by submitting my application and later my evidence folder on a thumb drive where the PDF called Start Here was the index to all of the hundreds of carefully catalogued pieces of digital evidence that I'd collected. In short, a final document, once it's published, is fixed on the digital page as a PDF. The frustration with PDF though, is always having to go back to the editor app each time you want to change something. So editing again in Word or InDesign and then exporting it as a PDF is a really frustrating workflow. PDF editing apps like these, they cut out the first part of the process. They cut out using a second app and now it's possible to create and manage and edit the PDFs in one app. In 2024, PDFs have they've long since matured from being the format of choice for just fixing a finalized format or compressing a file for sending. PDF has become much more than this. It's a tool for collaboration, for planning, for keeping notes. So much more of what we were doing on paper is now happening on PDF. For me, personally, PDF is central to my e-ink workflows. But for most companies, PDF is a way to secure documents, to get forms filled and signed, and to collect and analyze information. And being able to edit PDFs without conversion to different file formats is now becoming a must in professional workflows. Working with PDF always seems to be a block for people. And right now, to overcome that block, either personally or professionally, you do have to pay in some way to get some fully featured PDF management system. As an organization, you're gonna to need to license one of the PDF editors which exist. And the two that I'm showcasing today are two of the best in my opinion. And how many times have you found that you needed to work with a PDF and the only software available on the machine that you're using was the free Adobe Reader? Or of course, just opening and reading a PDF in a browser. It's perfectly suitable for a couple of options for, for reading or just for printing the PDF. But the moment you actually need to edit the elements within that document, you realize that you need to get something like Adobe Acrobat or PDF element. And this means that a lot of professionals, they simply rely on printing these forms out and filling them out with a pen and sending it out by either snail mail or rescanning it and emailing it. Those are some pretty 20th century workarounds there. PDF element is going to help you actually skill up your workforce so that they get used to managing their documents in the cloud space. PDFs then become accessible by anyone who needs access and from anywhere that they need to be accessed. And then the team are going to discover the amazing feature set of PDF element, which is going to make them more productive. And I think that's really important for teams at this point in the 21st century. Users of PDF Element, they're gonna increase their skills in using AI to make really powerful edits really quickly. They're gonna be able to use automation features such as batch production. They're gonna be able to review PDFs and edit them and repurpose the content within them. All of these are becoming essential actions and skills for professionals. And PDF Element lets you do all those and at a much more affordable price than Acrobat. So in my previous content, I've been exploring using PDF for so many of my work-related tasks. And now I'm gonna let it speak for itself. I've got a rough idea of how I want this video to go, and yeah, 
I'm going to let the AI write some of it. So it says, sure, I'd be happy to help you compare PDF Element with Adobe Acrobat. The user interface PDF Element offers a user-friendly and intuitive interface, making it easy for both beginners and experienced users to navigate. Adobe Acrobat has a more complex interface with a steeper learning curve. That's certainly true. Number two, editing features. PDF Element provides comprehensive editing features, allowing you to edit text, images, and pages within a PDF document. It also offers advanced features like OCR for converting scanned PDFs into editable and searchable text. OCR is optical character recognition, handwriting or text recognition essentially. Adobe Acrobat has powerful editing features, but some advanced features may only be available in the higher priced versions. So price next. PDF Element offers flexible pricing options with a one-time purchase or an annual subscription, making it more cost-effective for individuals and business users. Adobe Acrobat, on the other hand, offers subscription-based pricing plans which can be more expensive in the long term. Security, both PDF and Element offer security features such as password protection, redaction, and digital signatures. However, Adobe Acrobat has more advanced security features in certain higher priced versions. In collaboration features, both PDF Element and Adobe Acrobat allow for collaboration on PDF documents. You can have comments, annotations, and track changes in the software. However, Adobe Acrobat may provide more advanced collaboration features in certain plans. Overall, PDF Element is a powerful and affordable PDF editor that offers a wide range of features suitable for individual and small to medium-sized businesses. Adobe Acrobat is a more feature-rich software with a higher price point, making it a better fit for larger businesses with more advanced requirements. This comparison helps, yeah, it does. Thank you very much. Now, one thing about AI is it does tend to write in that kind of way. And in my experience, it's actually quite hard to make it sound more natural. It always gives you these numbered lists and subheadings and it's clear communication, but it isn't really the way that humans always speak or write. It writes in a very formal tone as well and it's very matter of fact and authoritative. But it does certainly seem to have got the gist of this comparison. Wondershare is a great choice for small businesses or individuals and it's at a great price point. And Acrobat is the premium option with more advanced features for larger teams working on really large numbers of files. In fact, this bit's all perfectly correct and numbers two, three, and four, that's something I was certainly going to include. But numbers one and five, I don't think I'd have made those points, but they are excellent points, and they're certainly true. You see, the thing about integrating AI properly is that it, it makes you very thorough. AI used well can massively increase the quality of what you do, and you just have to humanize the output a little bit to make it right for the right audience. In general though, Adobe Acrobat just isn't really cutting it for the ways that I personally want to work with PDF in the 21st century. It's software that I simply just don't want to use. Every time I open a PDF in it, I get frustrated. I think that's probably that more complex user interface with that steeper learning curve. I don't always get why the tools work in the way that they do, and I regularly cannot achieve what I want to achieve in Acrobat because of that. Okay, there is perhaps one side of Adobe software which is superior to PDF Element, and that is security. Adobe Acrobat provides the gold standard for secure, shareable documents, but that would be the case it is their format after all. If you don't know that, then PDF was originally designed by Adobe. Portable document format, it's called. Created by Adobe Systems in 1993, was proprietary until it was released as an open standard in 2008. So there you are. So I thought that I'd ask my friend Simon, who advises government departments and public bodies about handling their digital knowledge base. I asked him, would it be something that he would recommend? And if there were particular features that he would think would be unique or particularly useful to people in the PDF editing world. Simon sent back the following message. He said, it's nice to hear from you. I downloaded it and had a look. It's nice. It does what it says on the tin. It's elegant, simple, and innovative. It offers for free many features that Adobe wants to charge for. Editing and exporting PDF is very useful. Suffice to say, I'll keep it installed, he said. He went on to say that public institutions have higher requirements for data privacy security, and so they might trust more well-known brands more. In that, he's thinking of some of his clients like the military and the police or other government bodies. So both have really excellent cloud features, but the security needs of certain public bodies might make the choice for Adobe very simple. Wondershare are, however, they're an excellent and well-regarded company, and I'd encourage you to check out all their software offers beyond the PDF element itself. I'll be interested to check back with Simon to see if his opinion has changed after using it for a little while longer. So there are lots of benefits of PDF element, especially for smaller, more creative businesses with digital product outputs. And for those that have a small team who need to collaborate to manage a daily flow of documents and forms. Both PDF Element and Adobe Acrobat, they have a Chrome extension, which is really good. And it can let you turn a web page into a PDF, as well as you can add pages to an existing PDF or convert them and send them online. Though weirdly, the Acrobat extension didn't work on all their websites where PDF Element did work. And the converter, well, I never got that to work. PDF Element though was there in seconds. Both offer online tools for working on PDFs, 
but PDF elements do seem to be the more complete suite of tools, including their ChatGTP powered chat with PDF tool, which is available online. Wondershare's online PDF is actually called High PDF and is a great value option, with the yearly subscription of that just working at $3.33 per month, and that's amazing. Educators will also really like the AI content detector that they have in their suite. Adobe Acrobat, on the other hand, is £13 per month, or, or even more, just for the standard, or £20 per month for the Pro license. And if you need the ability to work between file types like PowerPoint or Word and convert to and from PDF with those file formats, well, you can do that on both Adobe and the Wondershare software. Both PDF Element and Adobe Acrobat can be integrated into Microsoft Word, which allows you to export your Word files as PDFs giving you plenty of options to control the properties and the metadata of the file. You can also redact and manage security on large batches of documents on both suites. Acrobat also gives you the options of requesting signatures in bulk and collecting payments. And that's a great benefit to medium or large organizations who are looking to centrally manage their large libraries of files. So in all these features, they lend Wondershare more to small businesses and to individuals. It's more suited to the creative sector and to education. Adobe Acrobat is a great choice for large organizations managing large libraries of potentially sensitive corporate knowledge. It could also be more suited to public sector organizations and those that need to manage legal documentation involved. But crucially, for individuals, PDF Element is less than half the cost of Adobe Acrobat. It's even better value with the perpetual plan. It's a no-brainer, really. And what's more, you can try it out for free and you still get loads of really powerful features all from the link in the description.